I would like to open the conference and to ask Peter Aronson, who is, as most of you already know, the coordinator of the project. Uh, and I would like to ask him to take a seat here and to present his paper on research projects, a new perspective. European uh, agents, challenges, vision and consequences of national museums making in Europe. Uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's really an honor to be able to sit here in, in Bologna uh, to open the final conference for the first part of UNAMUS, uh, which is providing a comprehensive and comparative assessment of the role of national museums in uh, European nations and state making over 250 years. And I thought that the, uh, the welcome that we got here from the university was uh, very relevant. I mean, picking out and showing the, the, the relevance outside professional, uh, uh, professional stakeholders uh, with cultural heritage in contemporary society. The urgency of the questions that we are talking about, both historically and in contemporary society. The level of investments in national museums is high in contemporary society. The motives and hopes are often a mixture of a will to secure a scientific and relevant understanding of the national heritage, community integration, stimulating creativity and cultural dialogue, and creating attractions for a burgeoning experience economy. There are many hopes for what national museums could do. In France, Germany, and the Netherlands, there are plans for new national museums communicating a stronger historical canon, a path also chosen in Denmark. A great many other museums in Canada, New Zealand, but also England and Sweden hail a more multicultural approach, downplaying the traditional national aspect of narrative and inviting new citizens to a more diverse idea of society. The pan-European project for a historical museum is also on its way. Ethnographic museums in many places open with post-colonial invitations to dialogue all over the world in tension with strong demands for restitution of objects ranging from the human remains of Samis to the Elgin marbles of Acropolis. It is a contested billion dollar cultural industry creating, negotiating, and reinforcing ideas of values, belonging, and ownership. The European National Museums, identity politics, the uses of the past and the European citizen in the acronym UNAMUS is a research project that explores the creation of empower of the heritage created and presented by European national museums to the world, Europe and its states. It is an unsurpassable institution in contemporary society. National museums are defined in the project and explored as processes of institutionalized negotiations where material collections and displays make claims and are recognized as articulating and representing national values and realities. This is important, it's a very long sentence, but it's an important sentence because national museums are not all museums that are state-owned in our project. It's a functional definition of the role played by museums. It could be one museum, it could be a set of museums that play that role, and the role can be played differently. That is what our project is basically about. Questions asked in the project are why they are established, by whom, when, with what material is the world and the nation represented, and with what results and future possibilities are these museums shaped. I will now rapidly move into, onto very thin ice for a foreigner coming to Italy, the year of celebration, 
but I couldn't uh, resist uh, talking a little bit about Italy. Uh, since the Renaissance, Italy and Rome has been the archetype of Western heritage in the form of an art historical legacy of a golden age, a classical age. This year, the state is celebrating 150 years, the Italian state, as a an united, autonomous and independent entity. In our project, Italy is part of a large family of young states and nations, united in the 19th century. It is also part of a smaller group of states that do relate intensively with the heritage of the classical period, a small group of states around the Mediterranean. The country can witness to several grand plans for building national unity and representing it in national monuments and museums. It can also testify to the many struggles fought in that endeavor inside the nation between ambitious cities and regions. The right place to host artifacts is the course of both demands on Italy and demands from Italy with high news value in international media. It's the question of restitution of cultural heritage. In our project, the theory of a close connection between museum and nation making would suggest a strong investment in a comprehensive national museum to be one of the indispensable tools in the process of unifying a nation. These are at hand, for example, in Finland and Hungary, and more so in Germany and Greece, other states appearing in the same period. Firstly, we might recognize that this mark of the history of Italy becomes a problem in need for explanation uh, is by, by the comparative context of, context of our approach by comparing with other nations, new questions do arrive. Secondly, we can gather a multitude of explanations to these divergence from the theoretically expected pattern. The excess and centrality of the classical open air heritage musealized in, in its own sites. The consuming competition with the Vatican during nation building the structure of secularization, assigning religious heritage to local bodies, heritage bodies, the establishment of several strong aristocratic collections before unification in many of the strong cities, the continuation of a strong regional elites coupled with low legitimacy for central government, unresolved legacies of fascism, just to mention a few of the possible explanations as they are documented in an excellent report on Italy to the conference made by Simona Troilo. Thirdly, we hope to be able to better assess the relative importance of these different possible factors by comparing systematically with the forces at play in other European states. How come that the narrative of Greek continuity from 500 before Christ and state centralization is acting so much more powerful in that country? How important are the differences in dealing with legacies from the Second World War to explain the possible use of museums for contemporary dialogue on social issues? Fourthly, and most importantly, the project will help understanding the role played and possible to be played by national museums in the context of wider heritage and cultural policies in Europe in the making of community, communities. Is the establishment of a certain set of national museums a decisive step in the establishment of an effective national policy? Or can it be substituted by other cultural means? Or are museums today mainly an optional luxury, at best an asset for middle class tourists? Well, you might recognize <laughs> the images coming from Forum Romanum with its tourists and, and the, the great monument to the unification. And perhaps fewer of the foreign visitors has been out to Aur, the uh, uh, suburb of, of Rome, where we find actually a comprehensive set of national museums uh, done by, by Mussolini. 